So now that we've established a nice background, a nice evolutionary history as to where fungi came from, we can now get into the nitty gritty details of what fungi really are. And so we'll entitle this next flowchart the general characteristics of fungi. So we'll just do general characteristics just so that we know what we're studying. What are fungi? What do they do? How do they do it? And what makes them so successful essentially? So let's look at these general characteristics. Now, fungi, um, as opposed to protists, nearly all are multicellular. Uh, a great amount of these are multicellular. There are very few that are unicellular. Um, nearly uh, all, put that over here, are multicellular. Nearly all are multicellular. So that already tells you that there's definitely more complexity. Just like we, just like I said, in bio 2, what we're doing is a stepwise progression of less complex to most complex. We're going to get all the way up to the human level eventually, but we just got to get through the other stuff before we get into the human biology. So we have more complexity because we're multicellular. Now we have systems, possibly, maybe even tissues. These things are going to start coming up. So now, what else do we need to know about the general characteristics of fungi? Also, be aware that fungi are not, they are not photosynthetic. People have a wrong, um, a very bad misconception that fungi are sort of like plants because, you know, they probably can do photosynthesis. Um, they look plant-like, they grow on the ground, so they might be photosynthetic. That's not true. Why is this not true? Well, that's because fungi do not possess any chlorophyll. So that's a super, super important pigment in understanding and utilizing photosynthetic capabilities. And they also don't have any chloroplasts. That's the, that's the organelle definitely necessary for some type of photosynthetic processes. So no chlorophyll, no chloroplasts. What can you conclude about this? Uh, basic fifth grade biology, if you do not have chloroplast, if you do not have chlorophyll, you cannot do photosynthesis, you cannot equate fungi to plants. Fungi are not equal to plants. So just so that we get that out of the way. So they are not plants, they're their own thing. Okay, now if they're not plants, some people might think, okay, maybe they might be animals then, because there's either plants, animals, or, you know, unicellular uh, bacteria. That's not the case either, and I'm going to prove that to you. So fungi are not animals um, simply because of the following. They are absorptive um, heterotrophs. So they are absorptive heterotrophs. Now, what does this mean? What does this classify them as? What do they do? Now, this is, of course, in reference to how they obtain energy it's through some sort of absorption process, and I'll explain what that means in just a second. Now, generally speaking, absorptive uh, heterotrophs, these are those that get food from outside sources. Now, that should be clear from the heterotroph name right here. That means they definitely need outside sources. They can't do it themselves. Get food from outside sources, and if they could do it themselves, if they could do it within them, their own bodies, that would mean they're photosynthetic, and thus we already classified them not photosynthetic, they're heterotrophic, so they have to get food from outside sources. But what they do that's uh, interesting, at least, is the fact that they do not, they do not ingest and digest food in their bodies, okay? They do not ingest plus digest two separate processes, I'll explain the difference in just a second, do not ingest plus digest food within, that's the key here, within bodies. And the reason why, um, and basically because they don't do this, we can automatically say that they are not animals, okay? Animals are the ones that are very good at ingesting and digesting food within their bodies. Fungi cannot do this, thus they are not equal to animals. They are not animals. So what do they do? Ingestion is the process of taking food within, and then digestion is breaking down food within. Now, do fungi do this? No, they do not. They have a separate process. This is a very animal-like process of ingesting when you put some food um, and you uh, put it in your mouth and then you have uh, digestion happen after you swallow the food. Those are processes that are animal-like. You and I both do that. But fungi, on the other hand, actually do something called absorption. That's called an absorptive process. So let's look at the absorptive process um, very briefly. So what does this mean? 
in order for them to do their thing, in order for them to get food from outside sources, they have to secrete something called hydrolases. So they secrete hydrolases, A-S-E. That should tell you something about what this is. This is definitely an enzyme, okay? Specifically, this is a hydrolytic enzyme. Do not forget that. A hydrolytic enzyme. So it's an enzyme that certainly has some sort of hydrogen component to it that causes a, a lytic, causes lytic, meaning breakdown or splitting open. It's a hydrolytic enzyme. So hydrolases are secreted. What does that do? Once you secrete hydrolases, the enzymes are going to break down polymers. Enzymes break down polymers. Uh, polymers are essentially food, right? Food are food consists of many different uh, monomers combined together. Think of like a, a piece of bread. Many different monosaccharides combined together to give us this large, huge carbohydrate known as bread. So the enzymes break it down. The hydrolases that are secreted by the fungi, they literally spit these out. They take uh, whatever food's in front of them and they break it down. Um, and they break it down into monomers. Now this is all being done outside of the body. They are secreting hydrolases. They are secreting hydrolytic enzymes. Those secretions are breaking down polymers into monomers. And thus, this is a form of what we call pre-digested food. Pre-digested food. Why is it pre-digested? It's because on the outside of the fungi, it's being broken down, not on the inside like us. We digest, break down our food on our, the inside of our bodies through our digestive system. Fungi do the opposite. They do it on the outside. So they call this pre-digested food, and that pre-digested food is absorbed. And there's the there's the there's exactly what we were looking for. What is absorption? What is this process referring to? This is what it means. You take the pre-digested food and you absorb it from your environment, and that means you're undergoing an absorptive process. That's exactly what we mean by this idea of absorptive heterotrophs. So end-all, be-all that you should understand about this is the following. Uh, fungi actually would prefer moist environments. Fungi prefer moist environments. They prefer moist environments. Why is that? That's because of this absorptive process that they use. They would like the help of a moist environment to really enhance this polymer to monomer breakdown by their enzymes. Their enzymes, remember, enzymes are very specific. They want specific environments to work perfectly. And the specific environment that these hydrolytic enzymes, these hydrolases want to break down food is a moist environment. Okay, So that's uh, our absorptive heterotroph uh, general characteristic. Now, what are the main types of fungi? So now we know how they eat, how they obtain energy. There are a couple of main types to be aware of uh, in terms of the fungi. Very general types, thus general characteristics. There are those fungi that are decomposers. We all know what decomposers are, but what we can just basically state about these are these are individuals that absorb uh, there's that word again. This is going to be seen a lot. This is a major characteristic of fungi, this absorption that they do. These are individuals that absorb nutrients, N-U-T-R for nutrients, from non-living matter. That's why they're decomposers. From non-living non -living matter. So things that are already dead, they have nutrients um, that they possess, uh, and the fungi will come and decompose these dead, non-living things and absorb the nutrients through this absorptive process that we went over. Um, there are also parasites. That's another class of fungi. There are parasitic fungi. These are individuals that absorb nutrients from living host cells. What's the key word here again? Absorb. Why? Because fungi are absorptive heterotrophs. Absorb nutrients, N-U-T-R for nutrients. Why do they have to get them from somebody else? They're heterotrophs. They have to do it from somebody else, and they do it through absorption. Absorb nutrients, the key here, is from living. This time they're living. It's no longer dead. Thus parasitic, plus minus relationship. From living host cells, usually. Okay. So this is at the cellular level, definitely. And then finally, there are mutualists, okay? So not all fungi are evil. Not all fungi are bad, parasitic uh, in their general characteristic. There are some mutualists. These are individuals that absorb nutrients from hosts, okay? Don't get me wrong. They still do this. They absorb nutrients from a host, okay? 
but because of this mutualism, this plus-plus relationship, it's a critical ecological relationship uh, for the following reason. Fungi will somehow, which we'll get into a little bit later, will reciprocate. They will give back for this absorption that they get. Will reciprocate uh, with actions to benefit host. Somehow, some way, which we'll get into the details a little bit later. With actions to benefit the host. Okay, so that's what we mean by this. With actions to benefit host. So, that's our three types. Decomposers, parasites, mutualists. Final thing to understand about fungi are their cell wall. Key characteristic of fungi is that their cell wall is composed of chitin, something that we went over all the way in Bio 1. We briefly mentioned it before when we talked about pro prokaryotic cell walls. So let's look at this chitin cell wall. Chitin is simply going to be something you have to remember as a nitrogen-containing polysaccharide. We've said this 20 times through the course of biology, 115 and 116, but just remember, nitrogen-containing polysaccharide. Uh, best thing about chitin, it is strong. It's, a, it's a, uh, definitely a structural component. Strong, but still flexible, so it still has some sort of flexibility associated with it, and it's also quite durable. Okay, it's a great evolutionary tool to have. Um, it's very, very good at what it does. And for this reason, fungi are very hard to actually kill. Because remember, if you ever want to kill a cell, if you ever want to kill an organism for that reason, cells are the basic unit of life, right? You attack the membrane. You attack the outside of the cell. If that outside of the cell is difficult to get through, that means the organism itself is difficult to kill because of that cell to organism level that we just went through. Fungi are hard to kill because of this chitin uh, cell wall. Very difficult to penetrate and destroy. Finally, last thing to do, uh, just to put this into perspective, this cell wall, uh, we always like to compare things as biologists. So let's do a comparison very quickly to the prokaryotes, which we've covered already. In prokaryotes, the cell walls are basically either gram-positive, G+, plus, or gram-negative. Gram-positive were those that have uh, a thick layer of peptidoglycan, if we remember. That was our gram-positive story, peptidoglycan. And then over here in the gram-negative, there is some peptidoglycan, very little, but more importantly, there's that LPS, which is quite toxic to anybody who gets infected by this type of prokaryote. And then finally, let's compare to plants. Plants uh, are separate entirely, mainly also because of the fact that they have cellulose within their cell walls. They do not have this nitrogen-containing polysaccharide known as chitin. So that covers our general characteristics. Lots of information here, lots of good stuff to work off of that we'll be constantly referring to as we continue through this fungi lecture.